Hey y'all, in this video I'm going to show you how to model in half or a quarter of the time it used to take you by using Blender's mirror modifier. You'll learn all the parts of the mirror modifier and you'll make this cute little low poly castle in the process. If you're interested, stick around and let's get to it. To get started, hit tab and go into edit mode, then hit numpad 1 to look at our cube from the front. Then, while everything is selected and you're in the vertex select mode up at the top, right click and subdivide. Then turn on X-Ray at the top right, or by hitting Alt-Z, and delete half your model. Just click and drag and select either the left or the right side, press X, and delete the vertices. Then look at the model from the right with numpad 3 and delete the back vertices. So you should have something that looks just like this. Then hit A, select everything. Hit G, Z, and 1 to move your selected mesh up so that the bottom of the mesh is level with the object's point of origin, that little orange dot currently in the 3D cursor. Now head over to the Modifiers tab on the Property panel and add a Mirror Modifier. By default, the modifier mirrors across the x-axis, and you can see that while we only have the faces on the right front quarter, the modifier is generating the left front quarter across the x-axis. If we then add in the y-axis mirroring, we get our original cube again. Now, we can also mirror our transforms across the z-axis, which elongates our model, but since we don't want to do that for the castle, let's turn that back off. The mirror modifier works by mirroring mesh on the specified axis or axes across the specified point of origin. Right now, that point of origin is the object's point of origin, but it doesn't have to be. We'll get to that a little later in the video, though. For now, let's take a look at the merge and clipping settings. Now the merge setting will combine a vertex with its mirror vertex if it's in the same place or within the merge distance on the selected merge planes. So if we applied our mirror modifier now, we'd see that the corner vertices will be duplicated all the way around our cube, but the vertices currently on the X or Y plane would be merged with their mirror vertex and not duplicated. The next setting, clipping, only works while in edit mode, and it prevents vertices from moving through the mirror plane when you transform them. So let's take this vertex right here. Clipping is not turned on at the moment, so even though this vertex is on the x-axis mirror plane and within the merge distance, we can move it away from the center of the x-axis by hitting G and X and moving the mouse. But if we undo that move and turn on clipping and try to move it on the x-axis now, you'll see that it won't move away from the center of the x-axis. However, because the vertex isn't locked to the y-axis, we can hit G and Y and move it around until it connects with the y-axis, but no further. Once we confirm that transform, it's now locked to the y-mirror plane, and we can no longer move this vertex on the x or y-axis until we turn off clipping. So let's undo that transform and get our cube shape back, but that's how the merge and clipping settings work. Now let's actually make the central tower of our castle. With the selection tool active, hit Ctrl R to activate the loop cut hotkey. Hover over one of the top edges and scroll up twice until you get three yellow lines. From there, left click to confirm the new loop cuts and right click to leave them in place. Then do the same thing on the other side and switch to face select mode by hitting 3 on the top of your keyboard. Now to create the little battlements, simply select the faces at the top, hit E to extrude them up and move it up a bit. And now we can see with only a little effort we have created the centerpiece of the castle using the mirror modifier to generate 75% of the model itself. Now I'm just going to scale up the object itself in object mode using shift Z to lock it to the X and Y planes, but just make sure that if you do any scaling that you hit control A and apply your scaling so that it doesn't mess up anything later on. Now that we have the central tower, let's check out the mirror object setting on the mirror modifier and make our corner towers at the same time. Now hit shift A and add in a cylinder. Then tab into edit mode, make sure everything is selected, and hit G, Z, and 1 to move the bottom of the cylinder to be level with the point of origin. Then hit numpad 7 to look at our objects from the top, and hit G to move the cylinder to the bottom right a few squares. Now that it's in place, add a mirror modifier to the cylinder, and let's take a look at the mirror object setting. As I mentioned earlier, the mirror modifier mirrors mesh across a point of origin, either its own or another object in the scene. By selecting the eyedropper in the mirror object box and selecting the cube, you can tell the mirror modifier to mirror the mesh across the cube's point of origin instead of its own. So now we can make copies across the X and Y axis around the central tower. To make these new towers, all you have to do is select the top face and hit E to extrude another one. Then right click to leave that new face in place and scale it out with the S key and hit E once more to pull up the top of the tower. Next, we'll inset the top face with the I hotkey. Then, just like with the central tower, select the top faces and extrude them up to create new battlements at the top. 
Now that the towers are done, right click on the object, select Shade Smooth, and go to the Object Data Properties tab. Select the Normals dropdown and turn on Auto Smooth. Now I'm just going to adjust the scaling here because castles are layered height wise. If you do, make sure you apply your scaling with Control A. Now for the final piece, which is the connecting walls, we'll actually combine both of the methods that we've talked about for modeling faster using the mirror modifier. So let's get to it. Hit Shift A and add in another cube, then G and Y to move it forward on the Y axis. Then look at our scene from the top using numpad 7 and put the point of origin for the cube in the center of the corner towers. It doesn't have to be exact, just get it close. Now scale it in on the Y axis to thin it out and apply the scale. Once again, we need to place the point of origin at the bottom of the cube. So tab into edit mode, make sure everything is selected, and hit G, Z, and 1 to move it up. Then move the top face down a bit so that it isn't the same height as the corner tower's battlements. Add a loop cut in the center of the model using Ctrl R and right clicking to leave the new cut in the center. Then add our first mirror modifier. Switch into vertex select by hitting 1 at the top of your keyboard, turn on X-ray with either Alt-Z or up at the top right, and delete the left side of the wall. Next, turn on clipping, tab back into object mode, and scale the wall object on its X-axis until the sides of the wall are completely hidden in the mirrored corner towers. Make sure you apply your scale and tab back into edit mode. Once again, add some loop cuts going around the top and two loop cuts going down the middle, and extrude up the top faces for the parapets. Now that the wall is modeled, we need to add a second mirror modifier and mirror the wall object across the central tower object on the Y axis. To get the left and right walls, we want to create a linked duplicate by hitting Alt-D, so that if we make a change to one of the objects, the change is duplicated in the other objects because their mesh are linked together. If you want to learn more about mesh data and linked duplicates, you can check out the video in the card above. Rotate the linked duplicate wall 90 degrees on the z-axis and move it into place. Then just change the mirror plane from Y to X on the duplicate wall, and you'll have all four walls in place. Even though the castle is now finished, there are a few more settings to look at for the mirror modifier. So let's take a look at the bisect and flip settings. So the bisect setting basically cuts off any mesh that crosses the selected mirror plane. To show you how it works, let's turn off the y-axis mirror for our corner towers for a second and turn on bisect on the x-axis. Then move the corner tower in on the x-axis and you'll notice that as the tower reaches the x-axis point of origin for the central tower, which is the object it's mirroring across, the mesh starts getting cut off. If we tab into edit mode, we can see the mesh is still there, but because the modifier is bisecting on the x-axis, if we apply the modifier real quick and enter into edit mode, only mesh that didn't cross the mirror plane is still there. So let's undo that, but you now see how bisect works. Something to note though is that bisect only works on the axes that are being mirrored across. So if we bisect on the z-axis but we don't mirror across the z-axis, nothing changes until we enable z-axis mirroring. Then we have the flip setting, which works with the bisect setting to determine which side of the mirror plane you want to keep. So by default it's set to everything that hasn't crossed the mirror plane is kept. But if you flip across the x-axis, you can see that only the pieces that have crossed the mirror plane will be kept. Now you can use bisect and flipped to model some weird intersecting shapes that you may not be able to create quickly otherwise. It's definitely worth knowing in my opinion. And now that we've got that done, let's move on to the last chunk, or the data chunk, of the mirror modifier. The last group of settings on the mirror modifier work with the UV data for the object or objects that we're mirroring. And the big downside to using this is that you have to apply the mirror modifier to actually see the results. So let's select the central tower and jump over to the UV editing workspace. Then if we hit U and unwrap, we can see the UV map on the left. Now, if we open up the data dropdown on the mirror modifier, we can see the UV settings. Mirror U and V determine if you want the UVs mirrored on the U or V axis when you apply the modifier. The U axis is your vertical axis, and the V axis is your horizontal axis. Now, if you mirror across the U axis, the islands will be generated flipped across the vertical axis, meaning that our islands are currently on the left, and they will appear both on the left and the right after we apply the modifier. And if we mirror across the V axis, they will be flipped across the horizontal axis, meaning they would just be upside down, appearing on the top and the bottom. 
Now if you mirror across both the U and the V, the generated UV islands will be upside down from the original, but also on the opposite side, as you can see now. Now if you don't play around with these settings, the UVs will be created directly on top of the existing UV islands. So if you don't want perfectly symmetrical textures, you're going to want to play around with this setting. The offset U and V settings determine how far offset you want the mirrored UVs to appear, and the vertex groups checkbox allows you to mirror vertex groups into the mirrored mesh. Finally, the flip UDIM box allows for the texture coordinates to be mirrored around each UDIM tile's center. Just to wrap this up, let's turn on shadow and cavity in the viewport shading to make it look a little cooler. Now at this point, you know all there is to know about the mirror modifier in Blender 2.92, and presumably going forward, because the modifier hasn't really changed since 2.7. That said, y'all, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it and learned something, hit that like button, and if you want more videos like this, be sure to subscribe. I'm Sir Pinkbeard, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.